Okay, in this video we're going to continue working with methods of proof, but before we actually get to doing a proof, I want to introduce a topic called generalizing from the generic particular, which is a really big mouthful for more or less saying that if we use general placeholders, like variables, it will allow us to make powerful statements in our proofs. So I'm going to give you an example. Where first we're going to do a magic trick. Um, you pick your own number. I'm going to pick the number 5.5. 5.5. 5. You can pick any number you want. It can be positive. It can be negative. It can be fractional. Um, now I'd like to double that number. So this is going to become 11. And I'm going to add 12. So 11 plus 12 is 23. Now I'd like to divide my result by 2. So what is that? That's 11.5. And then I'm going to subtract my original number. So my original number was 5.5. So I'm left with 6. And I'm going to bet that no matter what number you picked, you are left with 6 also. Right? Is this magic? No, it's not magic. <clears throat> this is, in fact, algebra. Let's take a look at this. Um, we could choose any number. That's just a placeholder. All right, this box, this we could also call this X. In algebra, this is typically called X. And then we do these manipulations. If we start with not whatever number we started with, we double it, so now we have two boxes. We add 12, so now we have two boxes plus 12. We divide by two, so the two boxes go down to one box, and the 12 becomes a six. And then we subtract our original number, which was the box, leaving, of course, a six. This illustrates the method of generalizing from the generic particular um, because our box is particular, right? It represents some number. You had some number in your head. I don't know what number it is, but it was some number. It was a particular number representing a single quantity. Um, but the box is also generic because we all could use different numbers, and no matter what number we put in, this would work. So this idea where we have generic yet particular numbers is what uh, is called this method of generalizing from the generic particular, and it's going to be very powerful. Now, is there any number our trick wouldn't work for? Nope. You can try negative numbers. Let's do a negative 5. We double it, and we get negative 10. We add 12 to it, which gives us a positive 2. And we divide that number by 2, and we get 1. We subtract our original number. Well, our original number was negative 5, so I'm going to subtract a negative 5, giving us 6. So see, it doesn't matter what number we start with. This trick will always work because we kept things generic. Uh, and we use this method of generalizing from the generic particular. Big mouthful, but it's a useful concept.